<sighs> I really didn't want to have to make this video. We're at Sinclair and in the previous video you saw us spend a bit of time on a private island off the coast of Belitung. Well, when we made it back, one of our worst fears happened as travellers. One of us tested positive for COVID-19. So yes, this video is not clickbait. Uh, we did get stuck in quarantine in Belitung and this is the story of how it went. Travelling around so frequently, we knew the possibility of something like this happening was way higher and it was something we were prepared for. It's just not great that it happened on such a remote island in Indonesia. we just like to mention that it's something that we and you need to be prepared for when traveling domestically in Indonesia during the pandemic. Currently, the rule for traveling around Indonesia is you cannot travel domestically if you test positive for COVID. So you have to do a mandatory quarantine in the place that you are found positive whether that be a self-isolation quarantine or a government mandated quarantine, depending on your situation. On June 27th, Red tested positive for COVID-19 through two antigen tests at the Belitung Airport, one of the only testing facilities on the island, and I tested negative. The officials at the testing station then told us that we had to proceed to immigration to find out what to do next. Obviously, if you test positive, they don't want you proceeding to a normal hotel, to possibly infect others, so we were happy to abide by the rules. Luckily, we had our Indonesian friend Andreas to help us. He was able to translate and transport us to a local government building. And that's the point where things got a little bit unorganized. Andreas then spoke to the officials at the immigration office on behalf of us, and they essentially told him that they didn't know how to advise us further because they hadn't received our official, RET's official results from the testing station at the airport. We did have his results printed on a piece of paper. We gave it to them and they still insisted that they couldn't advise us. They couldn't put us into a facility. And then they told us that perhaps we should just go and self-isolate somewhere and then get RET tested again. Even though at this point, RET had already done two tests at the airport. So this is the part where I start panicking because we hadn't checked into our new hotel yet and we felt extremely uncomfortable checking into a hotel knowing that red test positive and we could potentially infect others. We then asked about a PCR test which is one of the most accurate tests and we were told it would take between 7 and 14 days to get a result. So essentially we were completely stuck, we had no idea what to do and immigration refused to help us so we had to we had no choice but to check into a hotel and self-isolate for the next few hours or perhaps just one night just to try and figure out the whole situation and what to do next. We then found a hotel, checked in, went upstairs, ordered some food, we're having a nap and then finally we got a call saying government officials were on the way to our room. We were relieved that official protocols were finally being met because to be honest up until this point it was very unorganized and very stressful for us. The officials that arrived at our door were very friendly and they basically just told us that they just wanted to take us to a facility to take care of us and give us medicine. They said that we would be in this quarantine facility for 7 to 14 days. I then asked if there was internet at this facility because Red and I work online and they said no there isn't. I then start panicking and asked if there were other options, other hotels that we could potentially stay in and they said no. They then told us to pack our bags and basically come outside. Once we got outside, there were around 15 people there. Uh, it was quite a palaver. They were taking photographs of us and uh, yeah, basically staying away from us completely. Uh, we went downstairs and that's when we saw people in hazmat suits and an ambulance waiting for us. At this point, we had really mixed emotions about the whole process. Uh, on the one hand, it was pretty embarrassing and uncomfortable for us having so many people photograph us and just so many people surrounding us. Um, on the other hand, we were super relieved that you know we were in official hands and things were being taken care of. And then overall, we just felt pretty terrified about what was going to happen next. We had no clue where we were going and how they were going to look after us. For instance, if Rhett got really sick, we had no idea what kind of medical care he would receive. And if I eventually got sick, 
you know, we had no clue what kind of medical attention we would receive. So we're sitting in the ambulance and this is when things get a little bit uh, funny. It turns out some of the hazmat suit people watch our YouTube channel, so that was quite funny. They were giggling and talking. Yes. <laughs> they were just very friendly and yeah, it looked like things were going to be all good. And just to mention, we had not told anyone who we were and that we were YouTubers at all. They just, I guess because it's such a small island, everyone already knew that. Perhaps that's why they were taking photos of us and there were so many people around. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, to kind of ease our stress at this point because they were super friendly and giggling and yeah. After a 10 minute ride, we eventually arrive at the facility and you won't believe where the facility is. Uh, at the immigration office that we were at a few hours earlier. So, yep, uh, I think we were supposed to go straight into that facility when we first visited, but, you know. Didn't work out that way. All right, so we're back at the facility and we take our, our bags out of the car and we start walking through and we get shown to our room. We enter the room and, yeah, we had no high expectations for this facility. I mean, it was a decent room. It had two single beds with, I think, it, did it even have a TV? Just, it was, it was comfortable. It was spacious. spacious and it seemed clean. There was a lack of bedding, but I'm sure we could have organized something. It was, I mean, it was a decent place. They brought us big bottles of water and there was already like uh, soaps and shower, uh, Life Boy shower gel and stuff like that. So. That was quite nice. The lady then gave me a packet which was like household cleaning stuff that you would like clean bathrooms with and I was wondering what on earth this was for. So I then proceeded into the bathroom and this is where I was like, yeah, not very chuffed to be staying in this kind of place. The bathroom was something we've never seen before, a very um, traditional bathroom, is that, can I say that? Yeah, I think that's a traditional bath and shower situation here in Indonesia. Yeah, my only issue is, were, is that it was very unsanitary and I had been recovering from my stomach bug if you watched the previous videos and Rhett was, you know, potentially going to get very ill with COVID and so yeah, I wasn't happy about this situation and neither was Rhett. So I jumped onto the phone with Andreas and I started crying to him <laughs> and I said to him like this is really uncomfortable, I don't know how we can stay here for the next two weeks. And he says, okay, give the phone to the officials, let me talk to them. This is where Andreas saved our butts because at this point there was no other option for us, there was no other hotel. They said, this is where you're staying for the next two weeks. Obviously the English barrier, you know, it was hard to even communicate that with them. But luckily Andreas spoke to the officials and he got back, the officials gave me the phone and they said, okay, there is another option, there's... A much nicer hotel on the island that you guys can go and quarantine on. Oh, just to say that uh, this government facility that we were in was going to be totally free even to us as foreigners which is honestly super impressive and nice of the Indonesian government to do so because most governments do not provide you a free quarantine facility. And I think that was going to include three meals a day too. Yeah. I'm not sure we didn't get to try any of the meals so I can't speak for how they were but yeah that was going to be all taken care of at this facility. So if you are comfortable with that living situation then for sure that's a great option for you. It's free and you'll be looked after. There's medical staff uh, constantly visiting. We however just wanted something a bit more comfortable and cleaner and with internet. So yes, we then spoke through Andreas through WhatsApp calling on speaker and Google Translate and we eventually decided that we would proceed to another hotel and the officials were super friendly and nice they offered to take us in the ambulance to the hotel by this time it was like midnight it was yep. it was late we were stressed out so anyway long story short we proceed to the north of Belitung to the island where it's a little bit more remote and we get to this hotel and it is a much nicer it's like a resort but yeah, it was super quiet. There were barely any lights on. And I think we were the only people that checked in and were in that place mm, for the very, first very few quiet. nights. Yeah. There, were, there was like nobody else there with, with COVID staying in the hotel. So then they put us in the room. Unfortunately, the restaurant wasn't open, so we had no food. Um, yeah, we just went to sleep. Yeah, we just went to sleep and 
Yeah, it was a basic room, it was fine, it was clean, and we were happy to be there. We get a decent rest and the next morning we wake up to see that we have got ocean views right in front of us with the most turquoise blue water, it was incredible. And we were the only ones in the resort, so the staff messaged us and they said, you know, we encourage you to walk around and sunbathe and swim in the pool and go to the beach and just get some vitamin D. Take a run on the beach, his message was so funny. I'll put it up on the screen now. <laughs> then later on in the morning, uh, some doctors in an ambulance came to do a medical check. We had our blood oxygen levels taken and our blood pressure for both of us and everything was 100%, we were perfect. I just had a bit of a runny nose and a cough with some phlegm and a little bit of tiredness, but besides that, everything was all right. I was perfectly fine, yeah. no symptoms. I then asked the nurse if we could please get a PCR test because we wanted to know 100% sure if Rhett was really COVID positive or not. Rhett had felt like that years before with the normal flu, so you know we really wanted to know if it was a normal flu or COVID, and she basically said no we can't do a PCR test because he already tested positive for the antigen test the day before but the antigen test is notoriously known for not being accurate so that's why we really just wanted the PCR test. So after about three days of requesting every day for a PCR test the officials in the ambulance pitched up again and we got a PCR test on the 30th of June, three days after testing positive. They told us then that we would get the results within four to seven days I think it was. Because the, they didn't have a lab to do the testing on Belletong, it would need to be sent back to Jakarta to, to get the test results. Let's talk about the hotel and how we found the quarantine overall. In total we were there for seven nights, included in the price which was 1.2 million IDR per night. We got three meals a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner. That was supplied to not by the hotel but by an outside catering company. How did you find the food? <laughs> Honestly I had, I'd, I'd lost my appetite after like the first two meals. I just I couldn't stomach the food, honestly, it wasn't great. It was some of the worst food we've had in Indonesia, to definitely. A so. lot of seafood, uh, and Rhett and I aren't the biggest fan of seafood, and we had been eating a lot of seafood prior to the quarantine. A lot of rice and a lot of spicy food. Uh, yeah, everything was spicy. No Western options, so we were really, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as a local, you'll be fine with this food, but as people, Westerners, it just wasn't comfortable for us. You know when you're sick you just really want like home cooked food that you're used to, some soups, vegetables and things. We didn't get and, any and of And it was that. also actually very very unhealthy food. Yeah. Like it was, you know, fried egg and, and fried french fries and sausages. like sausages and it was like basically yeah, just super unhealthy stuff. So and rice and meat and rice to, and, and seafood. Yeah, and then eventually I requested, can we get some fruit please? Because like this, this food's really not healthy for someone that supposedly has COVID. Like you should be giving us vegetables and fruit. They yeah. eventually started bringing some fruit which was consisted of mainly watermelon, which is not really yeah. healthy either. Watermelon and pineapple. So yes, it was a really expensive quarantine and not worth the price at all. And then eventually the damn room had bed bugs and that started driving us crazy. And we moved rooms. Once, but not because and we requested to move rooms, they, they moved us because we were apparently in one of the rooms that was not specified for quarantine, it was just normal. Yeah. So they moved us to a quarantine room that also had bed bugs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe we brought them from the first room, who knows, but it wasn't pleasant. And overall, you're paying, I think, $85 for a night and, you know, it's just wasn't comfortable, we were not in the greatest moods, in fact I cried every single day, even though it was in a nice destination and everything, you know, we were still worried about medical care, we were worried about getting sick, we were uncomfortable with the bed bugs, we weren't eating good food. We were very, very isolated, we were about 30 minutes out of uh, the city, the town of, oh, yes. of Belitung, and yes, yeah, so we were up north on the northern tip of Belitung, very, very isolated, barely any shops. We couldn't order on Grab or anything like that. There were no shops within the Grab distance. Yeah, so if we were in the center of the city, we would have been able to order Grab. They allowed us to do that. But where our hotel was, there were no restaurants. Yeah. 
no mini marts. Nothing. Nothing up there. It was very isolated. Then again, our superhero Andreas saved our butts because, geez, I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> uh, he uh, offered to help us if we needed anything, so we were able to like order some extra water, some orange juice, uh, some packets of Indomie. And his mom helped, uh, she went shopping for us and we just sent them a bunch of money and it was really kind of them. Yeah. Um, thank you Andreas and mom, <laughs> that was really sweet. We even <laughs> got two chocolates, clearly devoured it all. <laughs> I needed comfort food. <laughs> was very sweet yeah fast forward to the 4th of July it's one day before the PPKM lockdown is about to come into effect and we get called to the hall for a antigen test which was a bit strange since we hadn't received our PCR results yet we're still waiting for them but we get called to the hall to do another antigen test in which we test negative both of us for those who don't know PPKM was the Indonesian lockdown where they locked down Java Island and Bali. So Belitung is off the coast of Java and in order to get back to our home in Bali we had to fly to Jakarta on the Java Island and then to Bali and they were going to lock down and we were potentially going to get stuck on Belitung Island for the next 21 days. And now that we're sitting two months later the lockdown still hasn't been lifted so if we didn't get out when we did we would still be sitting on Belitung Island right now. Heavens. But luckily we tested negative. We were incredibly relieved. We booked a plane ticket for the next morning at five o'clock and we got out of there. We got to Jakarta. We got through Jakarta. We got to Bali and yeah, we were super thankful. I, I still don't know how that happened because according to the regulations on that day that we flew, you could only fly through Java with a negative PCR test and we hadn't received our results yet. But the officials on Belitung Island told us that no, you will be fine today with your antigen test before PPKM came in officially, officially the next day. So we were super, super lucky because yeah, we made it into Bali at the last minute. Then what? when we arrived in Bali, the antigen wasn't accepted. Yeah. So we then had to pay for another PCR test. We did say that we had had a PCR test in Belitung, but they didn't accept it. And they made us take another PCR test in Bali and pay for it. And it was $90. pretty, yeah, it was pretty expensive, $90 per person. And they said, yeah, you're free to go wherever you want in Bali and you'll receive your results the next day. So we were like, okay. Cool. Then so we, we checked into some like a guest house like this one. Yeah, beautiful guest house. It felt so good to be back in Bali where there's Western food, good medical options and everything, all our friends and stuff. And we tested negative the next day. So all was well with We the finally, world. so like eight days after testing positive with the antigen, we tested negative with the PCR. Which doesn't make sense. So that's where we start questioning the whole thing did Red really test positive for COVID or was the antigen a false positive? And in fact, we'll never know because we still to this day have not received the PCR test result from Belitung, which is again shady because I have messaged the medical staff in Belitung numerous times asking for the results and they just... Yeah, so it's almost like we, we tested negative on that result and they didn't want to tell us because then they feel bad that we were wrongly put into quarantine and you know made to go through all of this and pay a lot of money yeah. but well it was our choice to pay the money to stay in a yeah. hotel we could have been in the facility but it could have all been avoided if we just got that pcr test quickly and yeah but we'll never know anyway. maybe red did have covid and he recovered really quickly that's just so we, we hope know. you guys uh, we, this was a long story time but it was one that needed to be had hopefully you guys can learn from it and it just enlightens you a little bit into what can happen 
if you're traveling on remote islands or just anywhere in the developing world, just bear in mind the risks of testing positive for COVID. Vaccinated or not, you can still test positive for COVID and they can still hold you in quarantine. Uh, after that whole experience, honestly, we're pretty terrified to travel to foreign countries now without being vaccinated because it wasn't a nice experience and it was very expensive. So travel, we believe, is not quite ready yet in 2021. But it's your choice whether you want to do that or not. I mean, at least in Indonesia, there's no domestic travel or anything allowed at the moment. So that's why there's no content. Things have been very slow because we've been sitting here. Uh, very thankful to be here and just laying low, keeping quiet, not doing too much. So we've got this video coming and then one more next week which is going to be about a hotel we stayed at actually before we went to Belitung so before PPKM came in and after that we have a planned road trip around Bali so you can stay tuned for that content there's going to be some awesome videos coming out now that we're able to travel around Bali again oh yes and we have decided that we will be traveling back to South Africa to get vaccinated foreigners aren't allowed to get vaccinated in Indonesia at the moment so I think it's just a better decision for us to get home, get vaccinated, and then resume the travels later on. That's that. We're all good, we're alive, we're safe. Thank you for all your well wishes during the time when we let you guys know on Instagram that we, we, were, we tested positive. We are very thankful for the support and the help. Some of you sent through suggestions and you were just really helpful and we're so thankful for that. If you're not following us on Instagram, you can go check down below. It's red and clear. And that's the most up-to-date information we post on there pretty regularly. Uh, if you guys found this video at all helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, Goodbye, guys.